This Fleet Equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hey everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. We're at the TMC show in New Orleans. We're at the Volvo booth, brand new, all new. VNL behind us. We're going to talk about the downspeeding options. We're going to talk about how it relates to sustainability uh, in a diesel world. And we're going to talk about the camera options. There's a lot of cameras pinned to this truck that I didn't know about. I haven't even seen before. We're going to connect with Johan Agerbrand from Volvo, who's going to walk us through everything. So let's check in with Johan. Uh, Johan, great to see you as Good always. You Thanks again. for talking to taking the time. So we got the all new VNL here. Mm -hmm. I know you have powertrain packages and I think an interesting part of this are some of the ratios, the axle ratios and down speeding options that you have going into those packages. Can you tell me how that might start changing some preconceived notions on down speeding and what ratios I need versus maybe what might fit my application no, best? Right. So what we're really gonna do with the packages, so we will have a super direct, we will have our package called iTorque and also straight torque. With those packages, what we will do is really put stricter or more recommendations on what are the ratios, right? So you're not gonna, the super direct will come with a 12 speed direct transmission only. If you want to overdrive, you will jump to one of the other two packages automatically. And when you do iTorque package, it's to, uh, to be flexible on speeds and still give fuel economy. So there we are pushing a 13 speed and or potentially a 14 speed going forward into that package. And then if that doesn't suffice you and you, you want something else, then of course we have what we call the straight torque with a lot of softer um, items. But in that we will only give certain recommendations. So like the straight torque will go from 247 up to like a 3. Uh, 4, 4.3, depending on your weight, yeah. et, et cetera, and what you, what you need to run. Um, but we really want to give that recommendation to the marketplace, because one thing that a lot of people don't consider, too, is you, you change the aerodynamics of a truck, right? We, we change this with almost 10% in fuel economy and resistance, and 7% and comes from the aero alone. That means that in layman terms, you can say, we need 7% less horsepower. So if you're running a you know, today on flat terrain and you need 300 horsepower to, to keep your speed, okay, you're almost gonna only need 270 or 280 going forward right. to do the same job, right. which provides for more down speeding. Right. Uh, probably another gear set you can go down and still have the same performance. Um, a lot of people want more performance, that's fine. Then you just stay with your gear set that you've already gone to and you will get that uh, significantly increased performance. Right, yeah, I mean, it almost kind of feels like, I mean, downspeeding, uh, I mean, you all have had it for a while, one of the first to come out with downspeeding way back when. It kind of feels like it's at the point of adoption, almost that e AMT thing. You kind of got to get, a, you got to kind of trust it, understand it, the technology has moved so fast that it can do the job. You might not need the, you can get down into some of those faster ratios and you'll still make it up. No, you're, per, per, uh, you're completely correct. I mean, down speeding would not really work without an AMT. Right. You, you just took your CDL. <laughs> uh, how many of you get trained when you see a big hill coming up? Yeah. Uh, are you gonna shift in the hill or are you gonna shift before the hill? So down speeding really doesn't, it, it wasn't good or didn't really work in an appetite with manual transmission. Right. When we look at automated manual transmissions or automated transmissions that can do a perfect shift in that hill, then you can do it. Right. So then it becomes much more sensible. Right, to use a pun here, we're gonna shift gears. Uh, we've seen some pre-series all new VNLs, but these have some cool cameras mounted on the exterior. Can you tell me what those are all about? Yeah, we, we have a bunch of cameras. So really what, what comes with this truck is we have a camera network hub on, option on the back and you can connect up to six cameras into there digital and or analogs, and they will all sh pop up into your secondary display or infotainment display to, uh, as a touch display, and you can, you can swipe and see the different ones. So a lot of customers like to have one right by the kingpin aimed up and see exactly how you attach. Yeah. You want to have one on the trailer, so you see behind the trailer, right. not just a trailer wall. Yeah. So uh, we have a lot of those cameras. We have side cameras that you can actually see here a little bit, way up there that you see on the, on the side fairing that, that brings you a view of the whole trailer length back oh, yeah. down, okay. and which is really important if you drive to have that view and see everything. 
right? right. Well, I mean, you mentioned the, the CDL la yeah. late last yeah. year. Yeah. Having a kingpin camera would be very much needed. You know what I mean? I could, especially as a new driver, I could probably save myself some trouble if I have a better view there. Okay, last thing here, because yeah. sustainability has long been a Volvo, a, a big, big important bullet point to Volvo. Yes. We've had a lot of focus on the electric vehicle side. Uh, mm -hmm. here with the, the VNR Electric. We have the all-new VNL. It's launching as a diesel platform. Can you tell me about that decarbonization story and how diesel still relates to sustainability? Yeah, and, and I think it's, it, we, when we talk about this, it's a question of urgency and, and time periods, right? So electric certainly has a place. It's the future. Uh, fuel cell will be the future as well. Uh, zero emission, that's where we need to go as an industry. But while we go there, we can do so much more right now, and we need to have that urgency. And that's really why we introduced this also with the diesel, because like I said in, uh, here earlier, if we can get the whole industry, uh, you know, everyone has to compete. So if something like this comes out, everyone else will have to compete and come, come with us. And if we can then move the whole industry 7 to 10%, that's equivalent to almost 225,000 or 30,000 electric vehicles on the road. Right. And if we compare that to the actual electric market that does, does exist on a class eight, heavy duty, not passenger cars, that, that was around 1,000 units last year. And it's really constrained by infrastructure and right. the availability of electric power. Right. And that will, that's not a quick fix. Uh, that will take some time um, and, and we really need to work on that infrastructure so that people can start using the vehicles that are available to them. Right, right. Gohan, always great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you.